Aches and Pains is a 1999 Maeve Binchy cheer-up book, which has been adapted into a stage play by Shay Linehan. Featuring hip replacements, nudist colonies and special wine nights, Aches and Pains explores two people's very different reactions to ageing and illness. The director of the play, Margaret Dunn, is with me now. Margaret, you said to me that it was Maeve Binchy herself who called Aches and Pains a cheer-up book. Now, what's a cheer-up book? What is Aches and Pains in its original manifestation? Well, I suppose the the topic could be very depressing, but Maeve approaches it as a cheer-up book. So she's there cheering up the patient who's in the ward with her. She sees it her as her mission in life to keep him you know, positive rather than what he he tends to be, which is very down, not happy to be sharing uh, with a woman in particular who talks about body parts and mentions sex with a chandelier and things that really drives him mad and says, "Would would could I not be in the private section up upstairs because he's in the VHI?" Yeah, he doesn't want to be in a semi-private room. Certainly not. The two people that we're talking about here in the play are called Anne and Stan, but this is at least partly based on maybe. Binchy's own experience is it of a hip replacement operation? Yes, she she wrote the work and Wendy Shea illustrated it after she had her hip operation. So Shea Linehan has adapted that work into a stage about a one hour stage play. The two characters then, Anne and Stan, chalk and cheese it has to be said. They couldn't be more different. Mm-hmm. Anne, to say the very least, is talkative. She is. She's based very firmly on Maeve herself. And Maeve herself would say about herself that she's a person who needed to say something on every occasion. So she's there with all the chat and all the positive side of life. Whereas Stan is very private, very introverted, certainly does not want to be engaging with a talkative woman who keeps nudging and prodding and trying to get him to open up. We don't know whether he has a hidden story, uh, but she she's going to get it out of him him if he has as the play progresses. And then this the adaptation that Shay Linehan uh, actually did for you you're saying he must have taken was it a small section of the book that suggested these two characters the Anne character as you say clearly mm-hmm. may have been she and you could almost hear her speaking mm-hmm. some of the words that mm-hmm. we hear but the Stan character much more introverted and much quieter man. How does he fit into the cheer up book that is the original Aches and Pains? Yes, he fits into the very end of Maeve's uh, work, Aches and Pains. He's he's there as a chapter at the very end about somebody that she came across who didn't have such an upbeat uh, experience in hospitals because every, Maeve has turned everything in the hospital into something upbeat and to something positive and into something human. But there's a story at the very end of the work which talks about somebody who didn't have that experience in a hospital. So Shea has very cleverly based the Stan character on that incidental story that came at the end of Maeve's work. All right, let's uh, listen to a little section from the play. Uh, Anne is played by Margaret Toomey and Stan is played by Michael Heavey. I mentioned nudist colonies, uh, that that features in this story. And in this section from the play, we'll find out exactly how it features. I take it you've never been to a nudist colony then? A what? A nudist colony. You haven't been to one, no? And you have, I suppose. Oh, you'd be surprised at the things I've done. I'm trapped in a mixed ward with a sex maniac. Who might or might not be stealing things from a sweet shop. Oh, sorry. I forgot the kleptomania. Is the shock of hearing about your perverts colony. Nudist colony? Nothing perverted about it. Everyone to their own. I went as a journalist, actually, to write about it. In the nip. I turned up on the bus with my clothes on, intending to leave them on. Intending? Well, the bus left, and either I took my clothes off, or I sat on the side of the road for eight hours until another bus came back to get me. It was Yugoslavia, and it was very hot, so... So? Off with the clothes. The mind boggles. (laughs) Everything was boggling as it happened. I hid behind a bush, then I crept out a bit and sat sort of covering myself with my handbag. Must have been a really big handbag. I noticed people with dangerous looking dangly bits and all sorts of appendages and nobody was paying a blind bit of notice. So I got the courage to slink along the wall towards the restaurant. Which I take it did not have a dress code. It did actually. You couldn't go in unless you were in the buff. I joined the regular campers and we all sat with bits of us falling into the soup and our bottoms roasting on the plastic seats. 